Yeah, welcome, Math 13 students. Uh, I have another uh, PowerPoint lecture, Chapter 3, Section 3.2, Measures of Variation. I'm going to share my screen, so please follow me. <clears throat> Chapter 3, Section 3.2, Measures of Variation. Part 1, Definitions, and Part 2, Details of Variation. Part one, definitions. <clears throat> Outline, these items will be addressed in this presentation. We will define measures of variation. We will determine rounding rules. We will include appropriate examples. An important note. Variation is a unifying theme running through statistics. Variation is the single most important topic in statistics. This is the single most important section in this book. Notation. <clears throat> Lowercase x will indicate individual data values. Lowercase n will indicate sample size. Uppercase n will indicate population size. <clears throat> Lowercase s will indicate sample standard deviation. Lowercase sigma will represent population standard deviation. Remember, sigma is a Greek letter. Definitions. An estimator is a sample statistic that estimates a population parameter. <clears throat> X bar is an estimator of mu. A biased estimator does a poor job of the estimation. An unbiased estimator does a good job of the estimation. Definitions. <clears throat> the range is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value in a data set. Range equals max minus min. Example, here is a sample of Verizon data transfer rates in megabits per second. Find the range. Maximum is equal to 55.6. Minimum is equal to 14.1. The range is equal to 55.6 minus 14.1. Therefore, the range is equal to 41.50 megabits per second. Properties of the range. <clears throat> Advantages. This can be quite useful in more advanced statistical analysis. Disadvantages. An outlier can change the value a lot. The range is not resistant. Definitions. The standard deviation is a measure of how much data values deviate away from the mean. It is like the average distance between a value and the mean. We have two formulas, one for sample standard deviation with S and one with sigma for the population standard deviation.
properties of the standard deviation. Advantages. It measures deviation from the mean. Larger S indicates more variation. It is never negative. It is zero when all the values are the same. Disadvantages. An outlier can change the value a lot. The standard deviation is not resistant and is a biased estimator. Example. Here is a random sample of vehicle speeds in miles per hour. We will calculate the standard deviation via a table construction. We will find the mean. We will enter X values. We will find each difference between the value and the mean. We will find the square of each difference. We will sum those squares together and then find N minus one, the sample size minus one. We enter the values into the table. Once the values are entered, I see the X column there with the values from the sample. X minus 78, that's 78 miles per hour is our mean. <clears throat> You'll note some of those values are positive and some are negative. Then I square those values, noting that the units are also squared in the process. When I sum those squares, I have 390 square miles per hour. So S is equal to 390 divided by four. <clears throat> I'll find the square root of that fraction. I'll note that the square will also come off the unit. So with rounding, my standard deviation is 9.9 miles per hour. Standard deviation details. There is a slight difference in the formulas for sample and population standard deviation. N minus one. This is a correction factor needed when sampling from a large population. In practice, we never calculate standard deviation by hand. We use our calculators. Definitions. The variance <clears throat> is the square of the standard deviation. The units are the square of the original units. S squared will indicate sample variance. Sigma squared will indicate population variance. You will note that the formulas are very similar to the formulas for standard deviation. We've just lost the square root. Properties of the variance. Advantages. The variance is a non-biased estimator. The value is never negative and it is zero when all values are the same. Disadvantages. An outlier can change the value a lot. The variance is not resistant. Example, 
use the results from example one to find the variance and present appropriately. <clears throat> so S was equal to 97.5, the square root of 97.5 miles per hour. Squaring both of those, I get to the 97.5 square miles per hour. Note the squared units. Rounding rules. The rounding rules for the range, standard deviation, and variance are the same as for the mean, the median, and the mid-range. We carry one more decimal place than the data. Summary. These items have been addressed in this presentation. We have defined various measures of variation. We have determined rounding rules. We have included appropriate examples. That is the end of part one. Part two, details of variation. Outline. These items will be addressed in this presentation. We will introduce a range-based rule for significant values. We will discuss normal distributions and the empirical rule. We will present a way to estimate S. We will introduce the coefficient of variation ratio. <clears throat> Definitions. Significant values are data values with only a small chance of occurring in a population. Significantly low values are found by taking the mean and subtracting two standard deviations or lower. Significantly high values, they are found by adding two standard deviations to the mean and higher will indicate significantly high values. Identifying significant values. Significant values lie at least two standard deviations away from the mean. Significantly low values, the mean minus two standard deviations or less, significantly high values, the mean plus two standard deviations or more. Example. Final exam score parameters. We had a mean of 82. We had a standard deviation of seven. Define the range of significant values. Eighty-two minus two times fourteen is equal to sixty-eight. Eighty-two plus two times seven is equal to ninety-six. A significantly low score will be sixty-eight and below. A significantly high score will be 96 and above. The empirical rule. <clears throat> Given that we have the following, a data set that is normal or bell-shaped, a mean mu, 
and a standard deviation sigma, which I'll abbreviate SD. <clears throat> About 68% of data values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% of data values lie within two standard deviations of the mean. About 99.7% of data values lie within three standard deviations of the mean. In pictures, remember the empirical rule requires an approximately normal distribution. Plus or minus one sigma gathers up 68% of the scores. Plus or minus two sigmas gather up 95% of the scores. Plus or minus three sigma gathers up 99.7% of the scores. We have a bit of a typo on that last screen there. Example. IQ follows an approximately normal distribution. The mean is 100. The standard deviation is 15. Find the percentage of people with an IQ between 70 and 130. I note that 130 minus 100 is 30. If I divide that by the sigma of 15, I have two. So 30 steps up is two standard deviations above the mean, 30 steps down will be two standard deviations below the mean. <clears throat> 100 plus two times sigma is 70, two times <clears throat> 15 is 70, and 100 plus two times 15 is 130. Therefore, 95% of people have an IQ between 70 and 130. A quick estimation for S. Sometimes we need to find an estimate for standard deviation quickly. This was used more in the past before we had ready access to calculators and the like. At times, a quick estimation of sample standard deviation is needed. S can be approximated by finding the range and dividing that by four. <clears throat> if I go back to the data transfer rate example in megabits per second, the range 55.6 minus 14.1 divided by four gets me to a standard deviation of 10.38 megabits per second. What is the actual value? 14, excuse me, 16.45 megabits per second is the actual value for the standard deviation. So you can see that there is some difference <clears throat> between the estimate and the actual value. Definition. The coefficient of variation, or CV, <clears throat> is the ratio of standard deviation to the mean. For a sample, the coefficient of variation is equal to S divided by X bar. For a population, the coefficient of variation is equal to sigma divided by mu. A quick example, consider IQ. We have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Find the coefficient of variation. Sigma is 15, mu is 100. 15 divided by 100 is 0 0.15 or 15%. <clears throat> the coefficient of variation is often presented in terms of a percentage.
Summary. These items have been addressed in this presentation. We introduced a range-based rule for significant values. We discussed normal distributions and the empirical rule. We presented a way to estimate S. And we met the coefficient of variation ratio. That's pretty much all for me. That's, that's it for section 3.2 in your Triola text. So the end. Let me stop sharing and I'll say thank you. And I'll see you next time for uh, section 3.3. .3.